Dude, look at that. Brownells has the barrel conversions in stock. Six hundred dollars. What's the twist on it? One to seven. Look at that. It's going to fix it for you. Also, look at how thrashed his iPad is. Tactical no, doodle. Look at that part. Just There's the like barrel 10 part. cracks in your screen, dude. Yeah, so bad. 600 bucks. There's your high speed graphic. Yeah. <laughs> to get a one in seven twist on your Bushmaster wow. ACR. Dude, that's a that's a hefty bill. Something you should have had right out the gate at yeah. this price level. One in seven. I mean, that, that goes without saying. Yeah. Yeah, you guessed it. It's tabletop review time. Bushmaster ACR. Finally. The Masada. Yeah, the Masada. The Masada Ooh. Experience. We'll say Masada TMP. a couple times. I love the name Masada. It's thought, awesome. Yeah, and yeah. as envisioned by Magpul, it was, I think, a better rifle. I, I think yeah. most will agree on that. Yeah. There is a long storied past on yeah. this gun. We're not going to go through it all. No. There's so much to say about the disappointment that is the Bushmaster ACR. You can see how long I took to review it. Yeah. What, 11 so, uh, years to get to this gun? It's taken fair. Well, and it's, it's a bummer for me because I used to be so excited about it. And I it's been out long enough that... I pretty much crush your dreams with a lot of the guns I review, right? Yeah. Every how many single... times have you shot guns in the project, TD? Yeah. And you were super stoked on them. As soon as you went out in the desert and shot them with me, what do you say? It just, it doesn't turn yeah. out how you expect it. You look forward to these things and you build them up in your head and you review it. And next thing you know, you're going, nah, I'm good. The AR-180 was that way for AR you. AR-180 was the worst of them all. Yep. The MP5, nah, I'm good. Well, it wasn't an MP5, it was yeah, a clone. Yeah, the MP5, Turkish ripoff, whatever. Yeah. So we're going to probably talk for about 45 minutes, would be my guess. If we could wrap this up in 25, I would be super stoked. Yeah, give it a tight 20. We'll, we'll try. But we're going to go back to the 2009 time frame of what was happening in the AR-15 world when the Masada was transferred over to the Freedom Group, Remington, Bushmaster Consortium, and this gun resulted... But man, was there a lot of hype about this gun. It was a, it's, I still can't really separate all my thinking on the ACR from that time frame and that era. Cause it's, there's some, I, I could talk a lot about how weird the rifle landscape was, but that was when suddenly ARs were garbage. Right, You couldn't right. use those cause it, well, you know, they have they, all the stoppages. It's way higher. We need to go piston. So everyone was super hard up for, oh, anything piston. Let's get it in production. Let's do it right. right. Spend two grand on a rifle. You're good to go. The Don't group think else. was if, if you were running a DI AR-15 back in 09 around there, that you're kind of a doofus. Yeah. And that if you wanted to be tactically high speed, you need to dump your DI system, throw on an yep. Adams Arms piston conversion, go buy a piston AR, go buy an LWRC, go buy any number of other a ARs that were piston driven to get up to speed. And the ACR was mentioned, the SCAR was mentioned. That was the landscape back then. And you got lots of crap for using DI and yeah. recommending it. I was always standing so, strong on DI. Honestly, I said, there's nothing wrong with DI. I don't care what the internet says. I took a lot of heat for it. I never swapped my opinion. And here we are in 2018 when I'm doing this review. And DI is warmly embraced once again. And people came to their senses and said, hey, the track record on DI AR-15s is pretty kick-ass. They got it squared away. Yeah, I mean, it's... There's nothing wrong with the DI system. You're going to get carbon buildup one way or another. Either it's going to be in your front end or your back end, either way. But that's the environment and the landscape where the Masada, then the ACR emerged. And what emerged actually was a disappointment to a lot of prospective tactical carbon buyers because it was promised at what price? 1500 if I remember right. And it came out at what price? About 2000 Actually more. But 22 for the Something nice like one, that. right? Something like that, right. And I remember that because in this era, the SCAR was coming out. The end-all, be-all. And back in the day, it was more believable that the Army was suddenly going to swap over. So everyone looked at these going... Okay, stop gonna... though, because that's it's... very important what you just said. Yeah. There was a trend there to replace the M4, the M16 series in military oh, service. Yeah. This was a competitor. Yep. And there was a lot of hoopla 
that that was going to happen. As it we turned out, it did not happen because guess what? The M4 M16 is serving just fine. It's not worth their money spent. And even worse, I've heard that they got rid of all the scars they bought back then. Because I remember they said, dude, they have they bought a bunch of scars. They're using them out in the mm -hmm. desert. It's awesome. It's being battle proven. And next thing you know, you you hear the reports. Yeah, they're they're pitching them. They're just sticking with. Well, we'll say in this review what we always say is, what's it do that an AR-15 can't do? Adds three pounds, man. Yeah, this gun naked. We'll just <laughs> springboard into this right now. Is eight pounds four ounces oh for this version with the MOE handguard on it. It's going to be even more if you have the aluminum tri rail, but it's eight pound four ounces. That's insane nowadays. A That's a lot. It was heavy back in 09. Oh, yeah. I've always been an advocate for lightweight weapon systems. If we go back to 09, 10 time frame, we saw a lot of comments a about what a wuss I was yeah. for well, advocating lightweight pounds. firearms. It's like, dude, you just need to work out more. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's a given. I'll, I'll say yeah, that right now for given sure. For everybody. Though. But uh, lightweight has taken off. I mean, the AR Ooh. builds guys are doing now are insanely light. Maybe too light. I think it kind of reaches a point of diminishing returns where you cannot really control it. Well, take a look. You at, need some weight. Look at that. That's a pretty standard rail out there on the market now. Mm -hmm. Look at the trends. The trend said, "Okay, DI that's a BCM works." BCM Alpha. Just run with it. Yeah, BCM, and then. Like the MFT stock, super popular. My weight's right here. So with a 20 round mag, it's six pounds, 15 ounces. And that's with a scope and everything on it. As you see, that's six pound, 15 ounces. And that's not like a a like dedicated lightweight build. I don't have specialized uh -uh. internals in there to lighten it up like a lightened BCG. I don't do that. I, It's just a, you know, a, a general purpose CQB AR with quality components. That's not a cheap AR build. I've said that before on camera. It's expensive, but we have it on the table because it compares against this favorably, I think, in terms of SAWC. I mean, eight pounds, four ounces, even back when it came out was way, way too heavy. Yeah. And hopefully the military looked at that and go, oh, I think we're trying to go lighter, not heavier. If they want to carry guns. something heavy, they already have the H&K. <laughs> the 416? Yeah, the 416. <laughs> And the steel 30 round mags? Yeah, the steel. Remember when those were advocated yeah. by the internet? They, oh, if $50 you don't have this, stainless yeah. steel mags. <laughs> oh, dude, it's the only one that won't give up on you. <laughs> the adaptive combat rifle, the ACR. We have an early version. We're gonna we're not gonna act like this is like the cutting edge version. Thanks to the Great American Gun Store, Gunnies. Their link is below for loaning us this one. It's in their inventory and it has not sold. Surprisingly. Surprisingly. A little bit of sarcasm there. But, I, oh, I want to say this now, but in case they misinterpret what I'm saying in our tone, we're actually going to say a, a lot of good things about the gun. Which This is not a rail session against ACR. It's actually a pretty competent weapon system, I think. It, SAWC, I will continue to probably hammer on that, and price, and value, and versatility. And then we're going to consider some other non-AR-15 competitors perhaps we've mentioned one already the scar 16s which we tested here and we actually liked it it was a good gun Scar's but it's good. insanely expensive for a polymer gun yeah insane insane now if you go on their website now bushmaster acr by the way i think their website's slightly subpar it is i mean there's some information there but not like it should be I mean, come on, dudes. Whoever's running that website, Freedom Group, Bushmaster, who knows? It changes hands all the time. You probably ought to come up to speed and make your gun more sellable, provide more information. But on that website, you'll see two variations in multiple colors of the Bushmaster ACR, the Enhanced and the Basic. The Enhanced has a 1913, again, aluminum tri-rail, a la SCAR. It looked like a SCAR yeah. situation to me, although it's removable. The AAC blackout flash hider adjustable buttstock with folds. This one's a fixed buttstock, by the way, in this particular version. Some guys really dig that, by the way. Yeah. They like it. But just so you know, the basic is a seven position stock. It has a 5.1T AAC FH. And it's only $100 cheaper. They really seem like the same gun to me. Yeah. It's... Like one has a tri rail, one has the MOE M lock can guard on it. Yeah. I, I honestly, if I had to choose, I'd choose this one. I'd choose the M-Lock. I like the length of the handguard. I like that it's somewhat lighter. 
and then I would just put skateboard tape or something on there on the front, jumping ahead of how did it shoot. We we really didn't have a lot of traction up here. Yeah. Well, this it system works pretty well, and you put rails and stuff on it. I'd, yeah. pr I'd probably go for this. If you I rail up, you have something to hang on to, and you could put a VG on it, too. Oh, totally. I just wish and, this one had the, the folding. I think the, the ACR stop is rad. Yeah, the adjustability, the adjustability it would have awesome. helped us. Uh, yeah, the fixed, I mean, the length of pull is somewhat short for me. How was it for you when you shot? It was a little bit long. Was it? Really? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't measure the LOP, but okay. for me, it was short. It would have been nice to have an adjustable. Well, doesn't on. matter. The ones you buy now, if you get one, they'll be adjustable. Yeah. By the way, M9A1, I'm still promoting this gun because I want people to know about it. It's awesome. No, I don't get any kickbacks. I just like the gun. <laughs> it's a Steyr M9A1. It's awesome. The long slide is phenomenal as well. The watch for the review is the Seiko 5 Field Watch Auto. You wore this during testing. How'd you like it? It was cool. It was a good field one. Totally. It's real handsome. Show them what you're wearing, by it's the way. It's a Seiko, so it's guilt free when you smack it with stuff. I got the infantry one. Oh, the infantry. That's kind of a Bell and Ross homage watch. Yeah. The call on this, the catalog is SNZ. G15, it's about a hundred and a quarter Seiko 5 that's about, movement. Actually, that's not it's a too great bad field watch. A, the 5 series that the Seiko does is all over the place. It the, is the, because the entry is 50 bucks mm -hmm. with the 55 tiny, bucks on that one I reviewed. The, the lady sized field watch. I'm it is making small. fun of it's small. It's small. It's very old yeah, school. It's, a, it's a cool watch. Go buy one now if you want one. But <clears> and then all the way at the top end, you have something like the Land Shark that's like 200 bucks. That's still doing the and I the divers that I did the Seiko five dive watches I reviewed those were about 115 130 yeah. boy I like those it's just crazy to me that they have that movement that goes it goes everywhere that entire breadth uh, it's just weird but they're all good there have been reversions to the ACR we're not going to attempt to get into the details and nuts and bolts because we're it's just too much information I don't think anyone cares and this core gun hasn't changed so while the stock may be slightly different maybe there's a couple revisions that we don't know about quite possible it doesn't matter the basic gun's the same and so the information the data we bring you right now will play across the entire acr line do you think that's a fair statement so don't get too wrapped up well that's not the latest acr it's the same barrel it's the same mechanism it'll shoot exactly the same fifteen hundred dollar acr is what was promised well that's too bad uh, again, if you go back, it's interesting what you said. If you go back to the 09 time frame, guys, it seemed like when I started TMP, they were looking for an alternative to an AR for whatever reason. Second yeah. cool, primarily video game, I think, primarily. I think it was second cool, and it, it made you like a different breed yes. of shooter. If you had an mm -hmm. AR back in 08, 09, you were a freaking jackass. <laughs> I don't That's, know if you're a would, jackass. A DI AR? You told yeah, me. Like, no, no, I've a DI. It. You're right, right. Because uh, piston's a whole other thing. It's like they But make sure like, you specify that. If you had a DI AR, if you didn't you're behind the power curve. Two grand in your gun. Right. You really just aren't much of a serious shooter. Right. Can, agree. It's a cute toy you got there, Tex. Yeah, nice job. And so these, the tools of the professional. I know several people, both talking to them online back in that time that they either sold their diars or they were converting them over the piston i would love to know where they are now yeah and they were spending a lot of money because that's what the internet was sending back yeah. then that was oh, the yeah. message of the internet and also some tactical trainers back then yep because that was the atmosphere back then magpul was going great guns there was a lot of talk and a, honestly a lot of tactical elitism across the entire industry yeah there and, was and, always and the, a lot of civilians were watching they feel they felt left out if they weren't keeping up with that and there was always this mysterious carbine course that people would talk about and go, oh, X brand is the only one that I've ever heard of not malfunctioning at this mm -hmm. carb." And you go, okay. And it was always something expensive. Yeah. And it, there, uh, well, want, the fun thing is at this point, we have so much data with our own shooting. I don't, I don't need to use anybody else's numbers. We just see what yeah. works and what doesn't. Yeah, it works here. just fine. I mean, we've got over a decade of shooting all types of guns and that's, that's all you're getting here is just our opinion, our take and how it shot for us. Well, I want to talk about Magpul back then because i feel like magpul's a normal company today but back then they had this apple like halo okay this kind of idea that they they couldn't do anything wrong everything they came out and right it, to be honest yeah they do cool stuff it's they're cutting edge i still think they're cutting they did, edge their mags were awesome the mm -hmm. tabs every little trinket they came out right. with was well priced it was u.s made it was durable 
it was cool. So I think this gun got a little more. It's called the halo effect. Yeah. It got some halo effect by their by everything else they were doing. The yeah. accessories. Oh, they made a they made a. It's like if Apple came out and made a car. Oh wait, they did try to make a car and it failed. Yeah, it hasn't been going great. Huh. But I like had this been done by another manufacturer, let's say a small one, maybe they call it the XCR. I don't think people would be as interested in it well if it didn't have that Magpul name attached to it. They would go, what? It's how many pounds? Nine pounds? It's Halo Effect. Ah, I'm good. Nine, uh, two grand. But instead, because it had the name attached, they saw it at SHOT Show. It was in the, the coolest level in all of Call of Duty. I the one where you're in the snowstorm. Right. Yeah. Well, a lot of us give passes to all types of things, whether it's a <laughs> firearm, a knife, and I'm guilty. There's sometimes, like a SIG 226, it's not the lightest gun in the world, but I still love it. But I'll be honest about it, and I'll say, hey, man, I'm going to raise a second cool flag, history flag, track record flag with yeah. me. Personally, I still like the gun. And so as long as a guy weighs a second kind of cool flag, even on the ACR, you can't really yeah. criticize it. If it's a gun he loves, it turns him on. He doesn't care if it's, what was my loaded weight on this? Nine pound, 12 ounces, as you see configured. So I've got this mount, which I think is a Nikon mount, just a one inch tube scope, an old Burris, and a 30, not a 20 round. It's nine pounds, 12 ounce. That's unloaded. Unloaded and no accessories up here. I got so no have... light, no VG, no sling. Holy freak. That's heavy, man. Now I'll say it here. There's things you can go in, and we started the whole video with this. You can go in and spend a lot of money to light yeah. your ACR. You can you can actually get a, a lighter barrel, I think, on it. There's barrel uh, configurations you can buy on it. Nefarious Arms does bolt lightning on it. Uh, and yeah, they do AR-15 barrel adaptations with QD enhancements. You can go to Nexus Tactical and pay $450 for a carbon fiber handguard. $450. That's... It's a lot of money, but I will Manicore, say... Manicore, Geisley, cool. Shooter's Element, Mod 1 also does a light and carrier for the ACR. I mean, Next thing you know, you just put another $1,000 into your $1,600, $1,700 gun. Now you're at almost you're at $2,700 for an ACR. What's it do that an AR-15 can And that's just do? with that stuff. That's no optic, right? That's just the gun. Roll in a freaking that's optic. Just, and... That's just the core components of the, of the gun. Yeah. It amazes me that, that I'm sorry, we're, this is an interesting conversation we're having. We'll get to the details in a second. But it amazes me that they decided to go to print, i.e. production, with the gun the way it was. That yeah. no one said, whoa, this thing is way too heavy. <laughs> no, I mean, they, yeah, they. I think one version had an aluminum lower on it. I want this to has say, a polymer lower, and they did that to save weight. Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to, when it first came out, I think the Remington oh, one wow. had a magnesium lower. Right, right. It was some cool, right. and that sounds super cool, but it's not a big difference in the end of all, man. Wasn't it? It's a, I mean, yeah. It's, the poly's fine. It's light. But where they should have just, basically, if you can't make it way less, they should have scrapped it or highly modified it, changed it. Do Whatever. what the aftermarket seems to be doing. Scallop stuff out. We took out the bolt carrier before we started rolling. The bolt carrier by itself with the return spring is almost 19 ounces. That's insane. I mean, that there's a lot of air. We ought to weigh the AR-15 BCG as well. I'm not, I know it's not a lightweight. And I'll talk about shooting dynamics here in a little bit. But, yeah, that it came out like this. Whatever. It's an interesting uh, point in time. Right now, my take is I don't think anyone's buying ACRs. I've never shot with anyone that has one. I never hear guys talking about it online. It, is it, and I mention this a lot in my reviews. It's kind of the apex of the introduction is what I call it. It shoots like a rocket into the sky, reaches its highest elevation, and then just kind of nose dives back to Earth. How many products, guns have we seen do this cycle? So many. I will say with the ACR that there was some bad blood there that what was promised was not delivered. Also, the availability of caliber exchanges, the prices, yep. and none of those components were ever made available. And guys that did, did, did buy into the ACR yeah. were very disillusioned and rightfully pretty PO'd about it. Because I would understand that if you said you wanted a 6.8 gun. You said, I want a rifle that can do 6.8, but I don't want to buy one just for 6.8. I'll get this, get the conversion kit, and then be able well, to do that but how much money you're going to and i've said this before how much money yeah. you're going to spend on that caliber conversion yeah how much uh, i'll ballpark it eight eight hundred yeah, yeah. six hundred just for another five five six you'll barrel. have to exchange your bolt head sometimes your magazine your barrel yeah why not just buy another gun yeah exactly get another serial number 
Because oh, unlike wait. an AR-15, an AR-15, I can build an upper. I push pin off this upper, which is CQB. I put on an SPR upper. And I, yeah, I have two different optics, but it's zeroed and ready to rock and roll. Yep. Do you have that with this? No. That's my because you have one optic, you have a monolithic rail on top, which is great. But now, let's see, you do, you do 6.8 conversion on it. Now you've got to re-zero. That's range time. It's money. It's just not practical, especially for WROL or any type of emergency defensive use. You mm -hmm. just want to be able to push, pin something on that, guess what, is already zeroed and ready to go. Isn't that the whole purpose of Soldier Boy? Yeah. That's one of the huge tenets of Soldier Boy, that is your system ready to go? Most... Most of the guys that we run into, absolutely not. It's either in the parts bin or they mean to get around to it. Everyone's busy. So it's a pie in the sky thing. I've never been a fan of caliber exchanges. I think it's way oversold and it's not cost effective. Rant complete. Let's go to detail. 16.5 inch barrel. It's cold hammer forged. Again, we kind of railed on the one and nine twist. Why? Why would you do one and nine in this type of gun? Are there other variations of ACR out there from the factory that are one and seven? I may have missed them, perhaps. Uh, we'll look at the accuracy because that really gets to barrel quality. We have an adjustable gas system here in the short stroke piston. We didn't mess with it and, and it was mostly reliable. Plot twist, mostly. I actually like the MOE handguard. I said that before. It's easily removable. I may do that on camera here once we get to it. This particular version comes with Magpul in bus sights. I've always liked those. I do see a trend in the industry to not include BYS anymore. I'm not sure why that is, yeah, other than to save cost. I, I kind of wish they'd reverse and let it, let the user decide if he wants to take them off. But I see a lot of high-end ARs not even coming with BUIS. And I see value ARs coming with backup irons. Yeah. It's pretty funny. I'm like, what's up with the premium AR market? Or, for this matter, a tactical carving market. QD cups, left and right on the ACR. Kind of a weird placement on those. I mean, it's like center of the receiver almost. We usually want it up here, don't we? You have a non QD cup here, just a standard, you know, mash hook attachment here. You have another cup here on the stock. So I guess between these two points it would work. We didn't try sling, it's just a minor observation. Polymer lower again, some texturing right here. Look in the mag well. Here's your mag release button on the left side and the right side, ambidextrous. So is the bolt release, it's right here at the bottom of the magwell. I actually liked its placement. It was a training issue for me personally. I had to remember where it was. If you want to lock the bolt open, you'll just push this up like that. And there's your charging handle. It is swappable from the left to the right hand side, non-reciprocating. You'll notice if you're a right-handed shooter like me, you have an optics mount like this, maybe a scope with a red dot, maybe less so, you're going to have some interference here. You're going to be running into your bolt. So you can smack it like that. That's always an issue when you have forward mounted charging handles. You can swap it over to the other side, but now it's a different training issue. Now you're coming offhand, charging it like an AK, which is doable. We just left it on this side. I'm just mentioning it. Uh, I, I don't think that's a major point for me. Ambidextrous safety. No issues with that other than I wish the blade was a little bit bigger. It seems a little bit stubby. It's stubby. I do like it, though. No issues with it at all? Uh-uh. How about the trigger? Did you love it? No. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't horrible. It's just... it's And that's... Well... Well, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. For this price point, you should Bingo. have a better trigger. Bingo. That's Especially where I was going. Especially when it, because it feels like on par with a rack DI AR that you paid 500 bucks for. It does. It It's like an M&P, well, actually the M&P Sport better, man. blows this away. But maybe the Savage MSR-15. So almost eight pound trigger. It was crunchy. You'll hear us complain about it on the inset footage when we're shooting the ACR. It sucks. Yeah. The good news is it's a an AR-15 modular trigger pack, so you can throw something else in there. That's cool. So add 200 bucks to the price. <laughs> for a good trigger, that's yeah. right. But you're right, for the price, why? A rack rate trigger, amazing. Uh, pistol grip is okay, you're stuck with it. Boo. Just like the SCAR, you're stuck with it. Just like the ARX 100, you're stuck with it. Actually, I forget. The ARX isn't swappable, is it? I think it was ARX molded. Is, yeah, it's molded in. Molded. And that, well, that's what Just like the AR-180B, you're stuck with it. Yeah. So, again. You're buying a modular rifle. Why? That's one of the most basic shooter comfort, shooter mm -hmm. preferencing. And it's not to say this is bad. Mm -hmm. This is a good grip. It's well-sized. It has a good angle. It's just fine. But, it, but what dude, if? 
so much possibility here and what you can do and they've gotten rid of that here I agree and something that markets itself as being hey it's infinitely adaptable is that a CTR one on that one or an MOE I think it's MOE yeah, I it's like MOE. the MOE it's my favorite hell they called it the adaptive combat rifle so I guess this is adapt. This again, not so this is an earlier version uh, with a stock. The pistol grip, of course, is the same, but the stock is, yeah. I, I would think, non-representative. Here it is. You have an adjustable cheek piece on this. Uh, I guess if you have a higher op higher mounted optic, I always go with the lowest possible mount. Just clear in the BOIS, as you can see there. I work hard at it. And we buy mounts to do that because that way my fat chipmunk cheek can be lower, and it just makes me happier. But the stock is. You know, we've mentioned it already. I like the polymer butt pad on it. It's not too grabby. Yeah. You do have some standard sling slots through it. Uh, what other features am I missing? I think I'm going to take it apart for you guys real quick. It's really, it is a modular system. I mean, we're kind of having some fun with this review. It's not modular with some important things like dual saying the pistol grip. But as far as the major components go, it is modular and it's really easy to take apart it's easy to service uh but you know what a lot of guns are i'll probably screw this up i usually do there's your bolt carrier big chunk of metal big chunk of metal we shot this 500 rounds plus though and it looks like it's new right oh yeah i mean it is clean back here Shut the crap out of it. And there's the look inside. AR-15 style trigger, I guess. Look inside the barrel. Construction of the upper receiver. With the bolt carrier out, I'm going to attempt to remove the handguard. It's a little bit stiff on the ACR. Ah, freak. Not good enough. To remove the handguard, you'll hit this push pin here. There you go. There's a look at the piston system, the barrel attachment, and this particular version of ACR. The barrel exchange was a big selling point when it came out. Oh, yeah. I think guys thought, hey, man, I can swap a barrel in and out really quick on the ACR. Have an asbestos glove handy if you do, because yeah. the barrel's going to be smoking hot. There's a heat shield on the MOE handguard for the ACR. Step down barrel. I'm not a super fan of that in an eight pound plus gun. Yeah, it's a weird looking choice. It's not super thin. I mean, that's not pencil barrel, but it's M4-ish. Yeah, that's, well, I don't get it. The price point, if you're throwing away the bad points of an AR, why would you do the same M4 profile? Agreed. It's, a, it's just odd. Yeah. And then make, I think you make sure this tab is like flat when you bring it back on. It goes flat forward. Yep. Then you gotta smack it. it. Goes together like butter. There it goes. A little bit tricky. Push pin back in. Then you <laughs> Just why I don't Working tick with sweet. this. Help me out, man. Pull this out. Anyways, I think the field strip is easy. Yeah. Handguard's a little bit tough, but overall, not bad. It is modular in that respect. Yeah. It's decent. But so is the scar. It's just like the scar. Where did that freaking push pin go? No, oh, there's one right here. It fell out. Dude, we lost a push pin right now. Well, look over in your half. You're the one smacking no, it all over. I know, but isn't this a good thing to find out? It's not captive enough. Awesome. I mean, I hit it to put that handguard on, and the push pin went flying <laughs> on this adaptive combat rifle. Where'd it go? This isn't made up, by the way. This actually just happened. It's over there by that bin, I think. There it is. Boom. <laughs> so... The adaptive combat rifle. If you have your AR-15 put together right, does that happen? Uh, no. <laughs> Not so much. Look at that, dude. How jacked up is that? I'm going to have to use my cadet. I'm going to use my nail file on the cadet, and then you put it back in. This just happened on camera. This is not a joke. What the hell is that? It's a retention spring, and somehow it didn't do its job. Wow. 
Did it just break? Dude, it just popped. Where did that spring go? Look. It doesn't look like it busted. What is that? Some pin. Do you have a <laughs> punch? Let me see if this has a groove like an AR-15. Yeah. So that is the pin that should have been riding in here. Okay, and there should have been a spring, but on camera this thing basically fell apart. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Is this made up, Doodle? Nope. Jeez. Maybe we shouldn't field strip them on camera. We'll just end up breaking them. See, now without that retention spring, now this push pin is loose. Awesome. Jeez. The spring didn't fall out, did it? It's probably in there somewhere. But why didn't it do its job? I mean, for crying out loud, it's a combat rifle. It should be able to thrash on that thing. It shouldn't be a problem. Field strip complete. I'm glad we did that because then it just revealed another weakness of the ACR. Oh! Pressing on, how did it shoot? We did have a hard jam with steel ammunition, true or false? Yeah, that was bad. Just one. Right off the line, though. It was the first round we fired with steel ammo. We didn't fire that much steel. Relax. Just a few rounds to see how it, how it did, and we found that it would jam with, with steel. But after that, we shot like, I don't know, 60 to 100 more rounds of steel, and it did fine. Yeah. So go figure. And so I'm really not going to ding it that much for it. And the brass ammo we, we fired, standard gas setting was 100%. So overall, I would say it's pretty reliable. Pretty reliable. Accuracy is as follows. Remember, expensive gun, special gun, highly touted. I would call the accuracy average. Average. There's a hunting shack munitions load. It's always been garbage out of every gun I've shot in. Some of the most inconsistent match ammo I've ever bought. Big mistake. I'll never buy that crap again. I thought M193 actually shot pretty good. And there's another target I shot. M193 is high velocity, not super consistent. AE223 bulk from Federal shot really good out of that. 75 grain match, okay. Okay, okay. These are Hornady match loads. There's Federal 62 grain poly tip. Norm attack, 223. That's a good load. Those aren't bad groups. I'm not going to say they're bad. I'll say good. But, I mean, I could roll all kinds of targets in front of the camera to show you what an AR does. Here's yeah. one at 300 yards. So this is 300 yards from an AR-15 build shooting basically the same. Three times the distance. Odin Works SPR barrel, 18 inch barrel, 77 grain match load. That's what I'm saying. I'll call it good, but it's not like amazing. I thought the SIG shot better. Yeah. A lot of AR-15 shot better. I think the SCAR 16S shot better than this, if I'm remembering it right. I thought that was a fairly accurate platform. Go watch my review on the SCAR 16S. Uh, we talked about the heavy bolt carrier group. It is a chunk of metal coming back and forth. It's a heavy front end. You saw the metal up here. It's going to be heavier if you adapt or you go for the enhanced tri rail. I thought it had a fair amount of recoil. How about you, Doodle? It felt weird, really. I, I, it really, it felt kind of like an AK. That's right. And I couldn't it did. put my finger on it until you crack this open afterwards and you see that brick they call a bolt. That makes so much more sense because it, it didn't feel anything like a normal AR or anything. You it did. feel the mass coming back. And Agreed. It was weird. I think there was some time during our testing I said, hey, do you want to shoot the ACR more? What did you say? Nah. You weren't really having a fun time with it. No, it wasn't fun. It you, wasn't enjoyable. We were just kind of going through the motions to get the data. Yeah. I took it to the range and shot it extensively there as well uh, in addition to the two desert outings we went on. I didn't really notice the mass there because it's locked in a rest. Yeah. So I have a good recoil device, re recoil absorption device. That's just a dynamic. I didn't like the trigger. You can replace that, but it's money. It's money and time. Okay. Should come with a good trigger. I just overall wasn't too impressed with it. It really kind of reminded me shooting the Beretta ARX 100. A lot. You and I were saying that in the desert. Like, yeah. that's kind of like an ARX 100. It's heavier, but the dynamics, the trigger, how it just seemed like an ARX to us. Maybe that's a gun you should put on your list, by the way. If you want something non-AR, uh, something different, the AR ARX has about the same level of accuracy yep. as this gun. Maybe a little bit worse. I remembered it was, it was kind of an undulating polymer frame gun. It seemed really plasticky. Yeah, I, isn't this free-floated? That one isn't. It is, it is. This is a free-floated system. And the ARX is not, Correct. if I remember right. 
and the ARX has a pencil barrel. It's not a super accurate platform, but it's lightweight. It's like seven pounds. Yeah. And I it's liked different. How light it and, was. Yeah, they both have that it. plasticky, slippery feel when you're mm -hmm. holding them. I re I didn't like how this was. It's just there's not much for traction there. You have the bars, but it didn't really. Do well, it for we me. did address that already. You could put traction yeah. material here, put a VG up here, and lock it. But again, what yeah. are you doing? Well, that's just the problem it shares with the Beretta. You're adding the Beretta weight. Does that one too? It's you're adding weird. weight if you do that though. Yeah. Or you could just put a hand stop like I got on my AR up here. Yeah, that was good. That would help. You'd lock in there. So there's you know there's ways to yeah. cure that. Accuracy good. Fair to good, I, would sh I should say, and the shooting dynamics were okay. Yeah. Would I buy it? Tactical Doodle, go. Only if you're really into the platform, I guess. If you like the ACR, and I, I'll say this, it looks awesome. The Coyote one, the new enhanced mm -hmm. Coyote, folding stock the rail, it may be heavy, it may not be the best gun ever, but it looks super cool. It looks just like a scar to me. I mean, if yeah. I just glance at the two guns, they look identical. I mean, I'll, the scar has more of a you know shorter hand guard. I do like the longer handguard and ACR that yeah. we complained about the scar, and that also takes money and yep. aftermarket accessories to solve that if you care. But they look similar. They are cool looking guns. That's why they put them on video games, by the way, because oh, yeah. they look good. I like the the control setup on this blows the scars away though. Does it blow an AR-15 away? No, really. Does it blow they, this? Which with, which with is more ergonomic <laughs> it's to you? Pretty much caught up. Yeah, and the the short throw safety. You said. You, well, actually, it's the same. Never mind. I was thinking, I was wrong. That's not a 30. It's a standard throw safety. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, the the ergos on an AR-15 to me are excellent. And again, they're, they are adaptable, which is the irony of this review. Yeah. This is not as adaptable as that. And I wouldn't buy this just to get the cool bolt release there because yeah, you can get lowers that. to do that. There are, there are so many ways to get that same effect or and all guns. the benefits of an AR. How about the Ford charging handle? You prefer that versus a standard AR charging handle? Yeah, kind of. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. It Good. is because if you're, you're to do it a that. lot, like if you have to work the charging handle on this a lot, it gets to be a pain. But it's not really designed that way in an AR. It's designed for initial charging only. I know. That's what I always criticize about 7.6239 AR 15s. They they make you use your charging handle yep. a lot more than it should be and used. It's a hassle. It's not designed that way. This one is more AK-ish, and it's yeah. going to be more robust. You can use it that way. And does lock back. By the way, no failures to lock, uh, lock open last yeah, shot. that was great. So would I buy it? I didn't really get a hard answer out of you. No, yeah. uh-uh. I would probably gravitate towards getting a SCAR 16S used, so it would be more affordable. Yeah. Because that, that would be a... The SCAR's cool. SCAR's a great gun, and it's light. A SCAR is seven and a quarter pounds. It's accurate. It's just super expensive. The Breda ARX we mentioned. I was going to say, if I if you're real serious about this, definitely cross shop it against the Beretta. Yeah. Because the Beretta does everything this does, and it's a little bit lighter. How about a Tavor X95? That's a bullpup. That's tough. About the same weight. Yeah. About Tavor's, the same accuracy. Agree. But it's bullpup versus a tactical carbine. I don't know. I like the X95 all right. I would gravitate towards a high-end AR-15 if you're, yeah. if you're willing to spend the money. You know, we did do a whole series of videos, AR-15 alternatives. I still have to post the last portion of that series. Because <laughs> it just kind of petered out, you know. But I'll probably post that video sometime. Did we talk about this gun, the ACR? I think, I think we did. we mentioned it. Basically, if, what, 16 to 1800 on mm -hmm. the street? Right. That buys you a lot of gun from other manufacturers. Grab that gun. It buys you this gun. The Poff Renegade Gen 4. Do you have that handy? Yeah. Okay, so throw that on the table. Which one would you buy? This or that? And I show this gun a lot because it's a cast yeah, member. It's a good one. It's a representation of a well done high end AR 15. Yeah. Which one would you buy? Yeah, Renegade. Yeah. But second cool if a guy just, you know, wants an ACR, I say rock on. Get yeah, it. totally. Good. Just don't no. pretend that no other AR on earth meets the standards of it. So, yeah, that's something. Yeah, we won't. I would never buy off on that. Say, well, it's so much better than any I AR just, 15. The, the it's not. time between failures is just far too high with your AR. No. No, an AR done right and maintained properly will run thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds without failure. And this, like we said, is not foolproof. It jammed right off the right off the bat with us. Yeah. So would you buy it? 
The answer is no, I wouldn't. I don't care what iteration of the ACR, I'm not interested. Let's do, okay, try this. I'm a Remington or a Bushmaster guy. I want to okay. know, how can I make you want to buy this over any AR on the market? Okay, good question. Give me a recipe. What do you want out of it? Let's say they're doing version two or three or whatever comes next. Great, great situation. Three things. Reduce the price. Make it around, I don't know, $1,200. Okay. Maybe thirteen hundred, thousand would be great, but I don't think that's doable. That's the first thing I would ask. Reduce the weight with your redesign. Make it weigh seven and a half pounds. I think that's reasonable. If you can bring it down to seven and a quarter, even better. And then make it shoot better. Whatever you have to do. I mean, improve the barrel quality, but make it a one MOA shooter. Then I might be interested. Yeah. Oh yeah, and improve the trigger. Yep. In other words, provide value for your customer. And in that answer, that response to that scenario you're giving me, I'm bypassing all the Masada ACR drama. Yeah. I'm kind of giving them a fresh sheet of paper. I'm not holding any grudges. Yeah. I'm just coming to the market and saying, hey, I'm looking at a bunch of different guns. How would I spend my money? There's your answer. Four things, really. Accuracy, lightweight, reduce the price, trigger. Then I would, I would go, hey, that's cool. And it would undercut big time the SCAR. Oh, yeah. Even now, the price is a lot less expensive than a SCAR 16S. There's your answer. What do you think of the answer? Uh, sounds about right. I don't know. It, it's a tough market. It's really tough to make a rifle that beats the AR because AR does its job so well. Well, it's here's the deal in the car market. So in the car market, sedans aren't selling. Coupes aren't selling. What's selling? Crossovers and SUVs. Crossovers and SUVs. So in the gun market, what's selling? AR components. <laughs> That's and sometimes ready-made AR-15s, but AR stuff is selling, Huge. especially components. And so what has happened to all these high-end tactical options to the AR, I think they flatlined. Yeah. Guys put it together and go, I'm not going to go out and spend $1,500 and another 1000 in accessories to fix its shortcomings. Yeah, that only fit on this gun. Yeah. It'll be interesting when that Polish version of this, the MSBS or something, they have that coming out to market someday. Oh, I did read a little bit about it that. Looks, it it's looks very a similar. Lot like There's this. there are some differences yeah. though. I'll be curious to see how it that. It has an even heavier bolt smoking. carrier yeah. I think in it. I got the the one thing that still bugs me is let's jump into a bizarre world where this is not the Bushmaster ACR, it's still called the Magpul Masada. You think it would be selling better? Well, a lot of guys would say if it was marketed as a Magpul Masada, it would have been a better gun. It would have been lighter, it would have been simpler. And I think they would say all the stuff they were promised would have been delivered. I, in a perfect world. Yeah. Well, That's what they would say. I remember when they gave it to Bushmaster, everyone felt this, like, what? Bush, you know, because Bushmaster isn't really the, the top tier of ARs back then that people would mention for their dream Well, Remington slash Bushmaster. Yeah. But when they announced the civilian one was going to be a Bushmaster, I think that turned a lot of the, the core market for this. The guys that are looking to spend that much for an AR alternative for a you know super elite tactical type thing, I think it turned them off. But would that be the same head it stuck with Magpul? Would this be a more serious market contender against all that stuff? Maybe you could look at the Microtech MSR as an example. I forgot that existed. Variation on the Stair Aug came out with a lot of hype. Guys loved it initially got into some hands and suddenly it wasn't so great. They did have some issues and it was discontinued. I see them for sale like used a lot. It's, it's the odd. rocket principle. Came up, great hype, nosedive back to earth exploded. <coughs> Maybe a Magpul Masada would have been the same way. Hard to say. But I think most guys will say it would have been a better product before the Freedom Group yeah. totally dicked it up. They, I recall them saying they had to iron out a lot of stuff when Bushmaster had it. Yeah, I'm I just said, surprised yeah, it's being sold still. Or, yeah. I would love to know the sales units per year in the last five years on the ACR. How many have been sold? Yeah. And so you asked me, you know, what would I need fixed before I bought it? Those things. Would I buy it now? Right. No way. Yep. No way. I, I would just put together another AR like that. Yeah. End of review. Thanks for watching.